Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I'm going to be taking and making a top swedge tool. Now, this is meant to be used with a pair of tongs or tooling tongs. Um, and uh, it makes my life a lot easier when I am doing things like center ridges down acanthus leaves and things like that. Been meaning to make one of these for quite some time. And so I figured I'd bring you guys along for the journey today as I go along. Now I've got a fairly small piece of one inch round 1084 high carbon steel. And that's what we're going to take and make this little punch about. And one inch round is 25 mil and it was approximately about two inches long or 50 millimeters long thing to take note of here is that we've created some light fish lipping going on here. You want to actually leave that in because that is going to take and create the cavity of the top swedge that I need. So I'm just going to forge that down just a bit more and refine that fish lipping and then we'll go ahead and chase in fuller in our groove. Whenever we fuller in our groove around the side so my tooling tongs can hold it. Uh, it will give the piece a little added length which is good. That gives our knuckles a little bit of height off the top of the anvil which is always good. And the main advantage of a tool like this doing a top swedging tool is the ability to take in uh, move around a piece versus having something like a bottom swedge and all the work's being done on the non-seen side from your perspective. Uh, you can't see underneath the piece as you're working it and sometimes that can get you to wobble a little bit and get off track. Now this is very much different. Let me come over here and grab uh, some of this. You guys have seen this tooling a bit before. This is, this is different than say like a top swedge for a bottom swedge in the anvil. Although you could use this tool for that, this tool is actually to take and dig into metal, flat metal, and push things aside. So it's kind of a bit of a butcher tool. It's not meant to complement a top swedge tool like a bottom swedge tool like this. It's actually meant to take and dig into metal and leave a raised hump in the middle. So that's what we're working on today. And the groove that I'll fuller in around the side is so this way I can hold it with a pair of tooling tongs with a spring clip. And that way I have one handle for multiple tools. I can always make multiple tongs like this if I really needed them. But that way I've got one handle for multiple tools. I can set this over here. I've got a swedge block just out of camera frame here. And I can just reach right over, pick the tool I want and continue on with my work. It's about that quick, so it's very nice. So that's what we're working on. I hope you all enjoy this video, and we will continue here in just one second. So I've got this piece pulled out, all nice and hot again. I don't want to hit it hard enough that the center of the mass of the bar moves. I just want to hit it fairly lightly just so those lips, I propagate the, that fish lipping action that happens. So that's what we're doing. And that's working good just like so. Just cleaning up the facets and that'll be good. I'll be filing and grinding this profile here later on in this video. Next step, I'll be right back with you. Once we fuller the groove, we butcher the groove around it. So this way we have a place for the actual tool tongs to grip into. Now we're gonna stick this piece in. We're gonna leave about, oh, three quarters of an inch to half an inch, probably more like three quarters of an inch or 20 millimeters. And we're gonna take and create a groove that we can use our tongs to grip into all the way around the piece. Now 
this groove doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. It's nice if it is, but it doesn't have to be. And you want to take and check it to the fit of the tongs. That's a fairly comfortable fit. I could go just a little more with that, so I think I'm going to. Give that a little more work. You do want to work it fairly evenly though. I will, I will tell you that much. Um, you don't want to take and work unevenly because you might push this mass to one side or the other uh, and therefore you won't have a tool that'll run straight. So there we go. So that fits in there. That holds fairly nicely. So that should be good to go. So now I can take and rotate this tool, hold it any way I want. And I can really give it some mustard when I come down on it with another striking tool and that'll help me lay in my fuller grooves. So now I'm going to heat this up and I'm going to normalize it. We're going to do that next and I'll just lay it off to the side of the fire. We'll heat it up to critical temperature and I'll just let it cool to the side of the fire, go do some other projects and I'll be right, I'll be back with you once we are ready to do some of the filing so that way you guys can see how that process is done. So now that this piece has had sufficient time to take and cool down and normalize, now we're going to do the file work to actually turn this thing into this top swedge butcher tool uh, that I have been talking about. So the reason why we left this to take and have a bit of a fish lip here is to take and help guide our file. Now, if you're not, if you don't have this, let's say you've forge this flat, that's not a real big deal. Uh, you can take a triangular file and start in a groove of where you want the, your round file to finally sit, and that'll be a perfectly okay solution as well. Uh, it will just take a little extra care for your file to get it down nice and square. Now, so I am using a, let's see if I can find the actual diameter. I can't. I'm going to call this a 3 8 inch round rat tail file. Uh, it's a bastard cut file and you know it's roughly about 10 inches long or so. So we're going to take this file in hand and now you can see how it just nicely aims us right up in the middle and we're going to go ahead and file. Remember we want to keep our strokes nice and even and we want to keep them going in the same direction. I'm just going to file this in nicely, get that started at the high point, and then we're going to work this into the rest of the piece. And just keep filing it straight on down like so. Now the ideal of this piece is not only will it form a nice bead for me, but it's also going to push the background away and I'll be working on that here in a second. I won't make you guys watch this entire this entire thing. We'll get I'll come back to you after most of this is done once I start this other side here so I can show you what that looks like. All right, that's coming along real nice. So I'm going to continue filing on this a little bit more and I'll come back to you as soon as we're ready to take and put the bevels on it that will turn it into a butcher and I'll show you what that looks like. So now we have this piece ready to put our bevel on it or our chamfer for the butcher portion. Uh, I like to take and lock my piece if I can when I'm doing this at the bevel in which that I want. In this case, we're looking for something like a 60 degree bevel, and so that's what I've got this locked out fairly close to. It eliminates the guesswork with the file, and I've got it set to a com comfortable position where I can file this now at a nice 60 degree bevel and take off this outside flat. So this way I can create the butcher portion of this top swedge or roping tool or whatever you want to call it. I'm having a hard time deciding on what to take and call this tool. Uh, it's been a while since I've taken a class with Tom Latney. I'll have to ask him when I take a class with him this fall 
what he would call that, what he would call this tool. Just take it with me and ask the master himself. So we're going to work this 60 degree bevel. We want it to be the same as our other side. It looks like it is. I'll we'll go ahead and just clean it up a bit more. And the ends a little bit better. Again, we're working all the same direction. Just like in the previous example with the file. And this happens, this happens to go pretty darn quick. Get that trued up. Make sure my edge, my line's getting true. And it's starting to look pretty darn good. I think I'm going to call it at that for right now anyhow. So now we can go ahead and rotate this ever so slightly. Back up to the proper stance in the vise. And we can refile our center a bit and take it out the rest of the way where we want the depth, final depth of our center 3 8 fuller line to be. Get pretty close there. I'm going to alleviate the front of the swedge and I'm going to alleviate the back of the swedge as well, the cut. That way it doesn't leave a back trail or a chamfer mark. We don't want that. I'm also going to not want this to be perfectly square. I want it to kind of funnel in, if you will. That will help me if I want to take and turn it ever so slightly. Or make adjust slight adjustments as I'm going down the piece. If I don't have this to be completely square, when it funnels in, it needs to kind of funnel in and funnel out. Hopefully that makes sense to you. And there we have it. So that is good to go for right now. Now the next step is to take this tool and actually go use it to chase something after I go ahead and go through the heat treat. Now, you technically don't have to heat treat this. Uh, you know, it's fairly tough, and as long as you're working hot material, you're good there. But since these are fairly small bevels, and I'm doing this little butchering here, I think I will take and try to heat treat this at some point. Um, heat treating is going to go like any other type of steel. This will be wa water hardening steel, so you can hard it in water, water, but you can also get a similar result, although not hardened, but you can get a kind of a toughened kind of steel if you just take this up to critical and dunk it into oil, and uh, you'll get a more tough type steel versus um, a hardened, uh, like a glass hard steel. And therefore, if you do it in oil, only take it to a pale straw color, otherwise these edges will deform. Um, again, doing it, since this is a water hardening steel, it won't do the greatest of getting hard or to its maximum hardness in oil. So you'll find that a lot with a lot of different steels. So anyways, I'm going to take this, but we're going to take and actually use this on a hot piece of metal. I'll go get a piece hot in the fire and we'll just use it like it is so you guys can see the result. All right, so let's give this a shot, shall we? So we'll find the center of this piece. We can find a, find a part to get a little bit of a rhythm going here. You'll see how it's starting to spread the material nicely. The tool's holding up so far so good. Like I said, I will probably harden this piece up when I get the chance. It'll just make it a little bit better. Um, long term, it'll hold up on the struck end a little bit better. I think as far as the working end is concerned, 
It'll work really nice. Now I'm just cold working this piece just to show you guys what's possible here. All right. And there you have it. So there's that tool. And hopefully you guys can see the result. So that takes and pushes the backdrop away and allows us to have a very nice and smooth center vein. And I might have to zoom you guys in to see that here. As you can see, being zoomed in here, you can see that rounded profile that it's been created now and the bevels or the banking away. Now that's helpful in a lot of instances um, because what you can do with this now is you can be able to take and forge down these bevels and forge them away and leave yourself with a mighty fine little center vein here that is perfectly nice and round. So you don't have something that's square in the middle that you later have to chase to round. And that is just by simply creating a hot working tool that will give you this swedge depression as you go up the way. Now this could also be made, or I could also use this quite extensively under a power hammer. You can make collars like this. Um, you could do a seam down this way and then bring the same tool down each one of the halves to round each one of those things up. And in fact, we may just do that real quick just to show you that because I think that would be cool. And that will take in to complete this demonstration. So let me go ahead and heat that back up. But again, there's loads of things that you can do once that gets pushed away and you leave that little center vein in there. It's a nice decorative detail. One way that you can enhance that is you can take this tool right here and you could take and make a similar light tool to create roping so this way it looks like a rope or like a piece of twisted rope in the center of a bar and that can be a very neat effect as well. Again, adding chisel work to your ironwork can add a lot of beauty and detail that otherwise wouldn't be seen. Um, but I wanted to take and say real quick to you all while this heats up, thank you for being here today. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button on your way out. And also um, share this video around if you found it helpful with your friends. Uh, Jessica and I greatly appreciate that. To all of our subscribers that share our videos and watch our videos on a daily basis, you guys are great. And it's a great way of sponsoring the channel. Um, by getting more and more attention drawn to this little side of the world. So we do greatly appreciate you that. If it's your first time here, consider hitting that subscribe button and uh, join the Blacksmith family here on YouTube uh, where you can learn for free and interact uh, with the community. Uh, we've got a pretty great family atmosphere and community here on the channel and uh, we welcome you to come and join and be a part. So, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to radius off these outside edges now just to show how that works. And now you guys can probably hopefully start telling how handy of a tool this is to have in your arsenal to have a tool like this if we were creating some form of decorative collar of sorts. This would be perfect for this. So come right back down to center to just straighten all that back out. And once it gets to colder heats, we just go ahead and uh, planish it out. So, anyways, that's it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, remember to comment down below what you thought and hit that like button. As always, God bless you, and we'll catch you on the next one.